It's Earth Day during COVID season. What is a Gen Zer to do to save the world? Welcome to Gen Z Deep Dive. I'm your host, Aaron Brown. This is season two, episode 12. I know the intro for today's Gen Z Deep Dive sounds very tongue in cheek. It stems from my professional frustration with how people want to impose their desires on the next generation. What do I mean by this? Well, over at Refinery29, Rachel Tepper Paley, a millennial, writes an opinion piece where she wants to convince the general population or the readership of Refinery29 that Gen Z will be all of our eco messiahs. The problem is no generation has been anyone's eco messiah. Sure, we end up with figureheads like Teddy Roosevelt and some others, but no generation has been our eco messiahs. And what Rachel wants to impose is her dream, hope, wish, longing. For the Gen Z generation to be the generation that rescues us from our environmental apocalypse. First, Rachel claims that Gen Z was all a frenzy with Earth Day plans. Now, I'm not against Earth Day. I don't want you to hear me saying that I don't care about the environment, you know, kill the wells, cut down the trees. I care deeply about the environment and spend quite a bit of time in nature. What I do think Rachel gets right about her article is that she creates a spotlight on Gen Zers who are making a difference in their local communities. For instance, Lizette Terillion, a 16-year-old out of West Springfield, Virginia, organized to clean up a local park and install bee houses at a Girl Scout run camp. However, due to the corona, Lizette wisely pivoted to install bee houses, not beehives. There's a difference. Lizette organized for families to adopt their own bee house for their backyard. These bees, which don't produce honey or wax, do pollinate flowers, crops, and spread good cheer. This pivot was likely to be more successful as families take responsibility for the bee houses, not volunteers who have to take turns or whatnot monitoring at a camp outside of Suburbanscape. Now, let me say this. Lizette goes on to make a very unfounded statement that does result in a good point. Lizette says, quote, our world leaders don't really put an emphasis on helping the environment. End quote. Pause. I'm going to pause there because that's absurd and ill-informed. Obviously, our world leaders do care because France was willing to crash their economy to reduce greenhouse emissions, which resulted in the yellow coats and riots in France. She also discounts our American political figures like the Ocasio-Cortezes or state governors like Newsom out of California who have proposed Green New Deals and strategies of their own. Now, what I think Lizette gets right is the last part of her statement, quote, as part of Gen Z, COVID-19 shows us what we have always known, that it's really up to us to address these issues and help the planet and all its residents. End quote, emphasis on us is mine. I wholeheartedly agree with Lizette, be the change you want to see. However, I have more grave concerns about the few Gen Z who actually do engage in some type of activism. I'm a firm believer that we have to think clearly and contextually about what we are saying and advocating for. I won't use names from here on out, but I do want to highlight some very ill-informed comments Gen Zers make. And unfortunately, these talented activists appear to be parroting talking points from millennial leaders in our federal government and other places. One Gen Zer wanted to highlight the 50th anniversary of Earth Day and take back Earth Day from the evil corporations like Pepsi, who simply use Earth Day as a hollow branding opportunity. Quote, since then, corporations and politicians have started to use Earth Day as an opportunity to paint themselves as environmental champions and engage in greenwashing without actually taking action during the other 364 days of the year. I think it's important that the youth climate movement reclaims Earth Day and celebrates it for what it truly represents, the power of the people to make change, end quote. It's true that companies responded to millennial demands to be social and ecologically justice-minded. 
especially with something like environmentalism. Now Gen Zers are pushing back against that initiative spawned by millennials and claiming the companies don't actually donate to environmental causes? Or is it that Gen Zers, like this individual, simply make an unfounded, unclear claim and parrot talking points that corporations aren't doing enough? Many companies that claim to be environmentally active, and I want to emphasize that, companies that claim to be environmentally active do donate funds. They also give employees community service hours to work at causes they want to volunteer at. Let's just not make unfounded claims and general sweeping accusations. Lastly, I think this is the most paradoxical. Quote, this pandemic, COVID-19 crisis, has made me only more aware of how important environmentalism is. The same forces of corporate greed and government negligence that have allowed COVID-19 to propagate and kill in this country are the same forces that, we, that have been leading us for years towards ecological collapse. In a post-COVID world, we need the Green New Deal and we need climate justice, end quote. Well, by this young person's reasoning, we actually need global warming because doctors agree that warmer weather slows COVID-19, slows the spread of COVID-19. When this individual says government negligence, is he speaking about figures like Governor Cuomo who refused to take ventilators from a gun manufacturer in Massachusetts and instead ordered ventilators from China? And China called him up and said, oh, too bad, we can't send them. Let that sink in. How did corporate greed create COVID? It wasn't created here in America. Wasn't it created in the West and wasn't created in most of the Asian continent or the African continent? How did corporate greed, let's even throw in the Antarctic continent, um, how did corporate greed create this, this virus? Is it possible that it's actually bureaucratic self-interest where a major world figure that is demonstrably anti-Taiwan held on to important information till December 31st of 2019? Finally, anyone who has read the Green New Deal should be able to recognize it is not the most robust, well-thought-out legislature that people celebrate. If one actually reads it, it's honestly very flimsy. Now, I have done something very rare for an episode of Gen Z Deep Dive. Uh, I have demonstrated some of my political frustrations and leanings, um, but I do so because I think these are veiled claims uh, that not just Gen Zers make, but millennials do as well. And what we're seeing is that millennials like Rachel Tepper Paley, who wrote this article that we're examining, hopes and dreams for an environmental Messiah generation. The only problem is those values and expectations are being imposed by millennials onto Gen Z. In Colorado, we know how to take care of our environment. We pick up after ourselves, we don't leave trash on the trails. And I think we're missing a major opportunity to avoid another major, major forest fire by not raking our forest. So at the end of the day, I think Lizette Trillion of West Springfield, Virginia gets it right. It really is up to us as individuals to address these issues and help the planet and all of its residents. Now this doesn't address all of uh, ozone emissions or things like that, that definitely need to be addressed. You know, how much carbon dioxide and uh, other chemicals we're pumping into the atmosphere. Uh, it doesn't address all of those things, and I'm not trying to address all of those things, but I am saying that we do have an opportunity to be the change that we want to be in our local communities. And I believe that when we see that, we will vote smarter and wiser on political leaders who will actually take steps to better safeguard our environment.